<laughs> Listen, I have to start taking like a scale to my dates. <laughs> As a black man, I have to start taking a scale because sometimes women be catfishing. They take up an old photo of how they looked before. So I'm, I, at least I can, let's just stand on the scale so we can just try to figure this out because you told me that you're gonna be, you know, hourglass figure, but I'm, I'm getting a bottle right now. <laughs> I just wanted a glass of wine. You gave me the whole bottle. I'm going on 50 first dates. Here's date number 37. So I'm getting ready to go out with this guy. We're just gonna go for a couple of drinks. I met him when I was out the other week and with my friends. Our group's kind of integrated. <laughs> but we kept talking, but I went home because it's gotta be a special occasion for me to stay out past one these days. I'll be honest. I always try and branch okay, out. Okay, guys. Uh, first of all, she's a beautiful, gorgeous boss queen. Um, I'm not even going to rank her because she's she's a ten. So that's where we'll start off. She's a beautiful ten. Let's continue like what I'm generally attracted to. This guy, he's definitely not what I'd usually go for, mm. but I feel like I want a nice boy. Yeah. I'm just yeah, yeah. so sick because of Because you've been ran through by all the bad boys. <laughs> the <laughs> I can't... It's a bicycle that all the villagers use i'm not gonna put it together you guys can do the rest but i fucked around and i feel like he's gonna be a nice boy we've been texting a little bit throughout the week not heaps but a little bit here and there so yeah i'm excited i'm just ready for a nice man to come into my life because i'm losing faith a little bit <laughs> Listen, I have to start taking like a scale to my dates. <laughs> As a black man, I have to start taking a scale because sometimes women be catfishing. They take up an old photo of how they looked before. So I'm, I, at least I can, let's just stand on the scale so we can just try to figure this out because you told me that you're gonna be, you know, hourglass figure but I'm, I'm getting a bottle right now <laughs> I just wanted a glass of wine you gave me the whole bottle I don't know if I can drink that but okay maybe maybe okay I could I could I I could drink a lot of wine I mean I, if I'm in the mood then okay The treatment is way different for nice guys. Way different. He asked, hey, do you wanna come? Nah, but a bad boy, bruh. A bad boy is getting it on the first date. Then the bad boy gets to smash while she's dating the nice guy. <laughs> the bad boy is in there. He's not even, bruh, the bad boy is probably at her house right now, just waiting for her to come home. But she's on the date with with the nice guy. Whew. Attracted to me, like, don't you like me? And I was like, no, I do, but I feel like if we go back to yours, then like you expect something to happen. And he was like, what kind of guy do you think I am? Like, I don't know, he's making me feel really guilty about the fact that I don't want to go home with him. And like, I feel like I'm reassuring him to be like, I am attracted to you. I don't know, I feel like I just need to like call the night now. Aliens no, live in the water. Aliens live in the water. <laughs> 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 
and they, they have these things where in the water they put nanotechnology in your water and your food oh, so they press a button and your stomach yeah. I know a smoke turning. shop that sells all the yes, flavors they, do weird, they have it. weird weird technology I'm trying to expose everything right now they do weird technology all the food that you're eating right now they yeah. put little nano little technology in there so yeah. when they want to get you feeling sick like if you really don't like feeling sick they can press a button and oh, feel nausea if they don't they have nano nanotechnology. All the aliens are in the water. They're actually getting ready to like, come out of everything. It's insane. True. We're in, the end, time. We're in the end times right now. I'm not even kidding, guys. Get right with Jesus. I'm not kidding. I promise you guys, I wouldn't lie. I'm not a weirdo. Listen, Ryan Garcia. Yes, he's right about that. We have to get right with Jesus. I don't know about the whole nano. That whole. I. I don't know. I. I just. I don't know. There are a lot of content creators right now. There are a lot of weird people which have a camera. So I'm just like, I'm just experiencing it just like you guys are. This is crazy. I don't think I can ever fully understand the appeal of drinking at airports. You f children, I have to teach you guys everything about life. I don't have pants on yeah, right now. Hear yeah, me out, right? Yeah, You're yeah, not yeah, driving. Yeah, you go to a bar, yeah, yeah. you can get drunk. 100%. I love drinking before flight. Cause also because I hate the turbulence. And then I hate this whole part where you're like lifting off and then you're like, tilted upwards but i've always hated carousels so i'm like i don't understand a carrot like what what is why go on a thing which is gonna shake your stomach around and you're gonna be like super just like you know just like and then after that you you puke and they're like let me do that again i'm like i i feel sick you know i feel sick in my core when i'm on one of those carousels so an airplane is just, I guess, a safer carousel. I'm, mm -hmm. There are more people that die on carousels than airplanes, I guess. So I'm like, yeah, it's a safer carousel, but I hate the whole feeling. And then it's also like this. If you are dying on an airplane, then you're dying on it. There's, there's no like, oh, we're gonna, like, you guys are dead. So I must drink before we take off so I can just be a little, you know, little tipsy and then I'm just watching my movie or whatever and then I, I don't really care about it but if there's too much turbulence then of course I'm going to puke you meet strangers then you get to publicly walk through like basically a mall mm. hey, we're f don't be obnoxious right then you get on a plane and you get to completely disassociate please tell me one bar one place that you get to go to where you can just be drunk and then just be like actually you know what it's gonna throw on some headphones mm. throw on some sunglasses put a hoodie on and just completely disassociate for the next three and a half hours i mean like you can do that at home if you think of it you can be at home you can drink and do exactly that Please tell me where else that is acceptable. If I could walk into a bar, get three tequila cranberries with a little bit of lime, drink those shits, and then just sit back in the corner of a seat and just be like, I am there. Look at me right now. No single human that I'm around right now is ever going to see me again. <laughs> President Donald Trump got into a little bit of trouble recently because he said he did not know that Vice President Kamala Harris identified as a black woman because he always thought she identified as Indian. That's her on the left, by the way, and that's her entire family. And before we go any further, let's hear straight from the man himself. Uh, I've known her a long time indirectly, not directly very much, and she was always of Indian heritage and she was only promoting Indian heritage. I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black and now she wants to be known as black. So I don't know, is she Indian or is she black? She is always but identified you know as a black woman. I respect she went to a historically black one. college. I respect either one, but she obviously doesn't. Now, maybe you don't want to take my word for it. Maybe you uh, Okay. Everyone wants to be black now. White people, Indian people. Being black is cool. It is. You know, don't touch a black man's radio. Like... You know, Will Smith. But if you're Indian, you're Indian. You can't identify as a black person. I'm a black person. You know. From the outside looking in, it always looks better, I guess. The thing which I love about us black people is that we have charisma. You know, we always have to be... <laughs> 
always have to be funny, happy, and, and all of that jazz. But uh, yeah, and then we're also very creative when it comes to music. Music is like the best thing. Like when it comes to black people and creating music, like, it's not even close. Kanye West, Jay-Z, Beyonce, all the black creators, Kai Sanat, Speed. It's like there, there's no competition. There isn't. So yeah, we're very creative and very innovative. But uh, I think if you're an Indian, just be Indian. Don't don't try to don't try to identify. Yes, you can have black friends, and you you can hang out with your black friends, and you can enjoy that. You know, but don't touch his radio. But apart from that, don't don't identify as a black woman. It kind of takes away from a black woman. If you think you might want to marry the person that you're with right now, okay. I got some pre-marital counseling questions for okay. you. I'm Jordan. I'm a licensed professional counselor. I work with individuals Perfect. and couples. Love working with couples, and I truly believe if we could really nail some premarital counseling, it would help so many couples later down the road. Today's topic is finances. Let me give you some questions to talk through about your finances with your partner. Most couples I see have like the bills sorted out, right? Like who pays for what bill. I wanna talk about all the other stuff we fight about. How do we determine fun money? How do we determine what each person gets for fun money? Are we gonna have one joint bank account or nowadays most people keep their separate bank accounts because we get married a little later in life. Are we gonna keep two bank accounts or should we have a third that is for joint? Very interesting. Uh, if I'm going to get married, I think we'll split it in the middle. Maybe she's paying for more. Because think of it, right? Let's say you're together with a girl. I've been in so many relationships where I'm paying, where I'm paying, where I'm paying. So I want to try something different where she's also investing in me. Where she feels like, no, nah, I can't leave because I've invested too much money in this. Because now it feels like if a girl is not even working or she's not even doing anything to get the money, she can just leave. She becomes a spoiled brat. But if she's actually working, like, oh, I put in like 10 hours today, like, oh, or I put in this much, I put in 10,000, she ain't going to leave you. It, it's going to be harder for her to leave you because then she's going to be thinking about, I did this investment and she's going to be thinking of that because girls if you just hear them the girls which I've dated or if you just listen to every single girl which ever talks about money they always complain about the fact that oh he wasn't paying like they're very very selfish when it comes to money now I'm not gonna do what I've always done and that's me paying I was I dated this doctor once right and we're sitting at the restaurant and what's this Italian restaurant and she's ordering the most expensive food. I look at the bill, the bill is like, it's a lot. I just put my card there and I did not even flinch. And mind you, it, it did hurt. <laughs> it, it did hurt, but I did not even flinch. And I was thinking about it, right? I was thinking, what if three guys wanted to kill me? Let's say three days after the date. Can I call this girl and be like, I need your help. Like, I, I call my friends and they handle the situation. So I'm like, why not just take out one of my friends and pay half of that? and just hang out with my friend and we're just having a good time. Instead of paying for this girl, we date for like a month and then she disappears. And none of that money is paid back. It's just money which I just wasted. So I'm like, she, she has to contribute. At least we're having a joint account where we both have access to it. Or we have a joint account, we, we both put in money and then she can look over it and then we can together, I guess, decide. I, I don't know. 
joint stuff like bills, but also joint fun stuff. Mm. Date nights, vacations, furniture for the house. Like, how do we determine who pays the things that we mm. share together? If we have kids, especially, a lot of couples aren't prepared for that. That they figure out, like, I spend my money with my full income, I spend mine with my full income, but suddenly we have a kid. Maybe one person decides to stay home or go part-time, maybe even not, but it's like, this kid is 50-50 ours. Who pays for clothes yeah. and toys and daycare, etc.? Do we have to ask each other about every purchase? Do we have to ask each other about big purchases? If you are a two-income household and someone makes more money, does that person get more fun spending money to do whatever they want? Yeah. Or are you going to find a way to make it even? If you live in a household where one person stays home and doesn't make an income, how do you determine yeah. who gets fun money, yeah. how much fun money, yeah. and how that's going to be spent? But that's you a different discussion because if you think of it, if I have a wife and she is at home and she's taking care of my kids, of course then, then I got her. But if we're talking about just like a girlfriend and we're just dating, it's 50-50 from now on. 50-50, like too much, too much money is just thrown into the garbage bin for like, oh my God, thank you. Mwah. Usually when couples are getting together, they already have separate money, so they don't think a lot of how we're going to tackle these future things that come up. Again, family vacations or family holidays or things that we're doing together, how are we going to tackle that when the time comes? Start having these hard conversations today, and it's going to set you up for a lot of future success. I'm going on 51st. Well, that's where we're going to end this video. I hope you guys liked this installment of the Yambo Davidson show. They're all beautiful, gorgeous women. Don't cancel me. Um, these are all jokes. I'm a comedian. Ha ha ha.